This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Welcome back to Caravan of Garbage, the show where we go, we watched a thing and now you have to listen to us talk about it. You have to sit there and listen, God you, damn it! You don't have to. You have to. Whoa! <laughs> is this being used in some sort of CIA torture uh, scenario? It's exactly what it is. And Ooh. if you could also leave a like, uh, that would probably also help you. That's right, yeah. <laughs> it's more for you than us. You're being tied to a chair except for one hand, which you're only allowed... <laughs> To use to click like. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so this week we are looking at the 1998 feature length backdoor pilot for uh, uh, Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It was uh, supposed to launch a Fox series. Oh my goodness. And shockingly it didn't quite take off because, Mason, if you look at this, uh, if you break it down into parts, into elements, mm -hmm. a lot of the lore here, it's taken directly from Marvel in a time when they didn't really do that. They just they like, changed names and characters and powers and everything and it would wouldn't resemble anything. Yeah, at they all. were they were unwilling to take the risks in this era. Yeah. You know, it, it was that era of we're gonna do the X Men mm -hmm. but um we don't want to commit to the, the gold and blue costumes yeah. or like the unique costumes. We'll just give them black leather suits. Exactly, time, yeah. Think. And so, boy, how does this have some black leather suits? Boy, well, does it. Because, yeah, if you look at it, it's got names of actual characters. It's got Nick Fury. It's got Baron Von Strucker. It's got Alexander Pierce. Mm, that's right. Uh, it's got Valentina, Dum Dum Dugan. You've got Halle Carriers. You've sort of got a <laughs> Quinjet. I think that's a Quinjet maybe, is it? Yeah, sort of. Sort yes, of. Yeah. There's life model decoys. And I guess my point is they thought about it. And mm. I think the reason for that is because it was written by David Goyer, who worked on Blade, The Dark Knight, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman. And you're saying after all his successes there, <laughs> he went back in time. That's right. And he wrote this crap pilot, is <laughs> he wrote, what you're saying. Yeah. Wow. See, that's the thing, though, isn't it? Because it's so boring. Like, it's, it's such a tough watch. And by that I mean it's literally tough to watch. Like, I had to, like, physically, like, make myself clockwork yeah. orange style almost just stare at the screen and there's only so much I could absorb because I feel like there's like large chunks of this that I just, I've blanked. Yeah, there are two, uh, uh, towards the middle, uh, uh, there are two action sequences happening simultaneously. Is there? Yep. <laughs> there's two teams. They split oh, the okay, teams up. Okay. They're like, let's build up these a big team of five. And then they split them up into two separate action sequences at the end. And they just have generic, basic shootouts. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, I think you're saying that they've committed to some stuff, but they've really just committed to names. Yeah, like, yes, that's Dumb, what Dumb I mean. Dumb Dugan yes. is famous for, like, a shock of red hair and a bowler hat and a moustache. Yeah. And this guy's just a guy. He's just a He's guy. He's just a yeah. guy. You're, you know? you're 100% right. Uh, Alexander Ale Pierce doesn't even look like Robert Redford. He's not... Yeah, and he's not... <laughs> British? No. He's not British in the comics. Oh, yeah, he's British in this, isn't he? Yeah. There's so... I'm sorry, I'm really going to struggle because there's so much I and forgot. And he's, he's... The only reason he's British is because they needed, like, a like a, like a a fop yeah. to contrast <laughs> against Nick Fury. Because Nick Fury in this... And I think David Hasselhoff is well cast as Nick Fury. I think he looks like him, but he's terrible. I did, well, all right. But he's... He's this this Nick Fury. He's all about. He doesn't like those pencil necked number crunching pen pushes. He doesn't like rules about not smoking in a helicarrier. Yeah. He all he wants to do is live in an abandoned mine shaft. <laughs> but they won't let him. They're gonna bring him back for one last job. Just hitting an axe into the side of a mine, also very near the entrance to the mine. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. What so happen, what he, happens when it rains? <laughs> it's a great question. So the story of this is he's being forced into retirement by those goddamn pencil pushers. Mm -hmm. But then they realise that they need Nick Fury because Hydra's back because the children of Baron Von Strucker who... He killed, maybe, that's what happened. Sorry, my brain is literally, my brain is literally also, rejecting this. who knew <laughs> that after defeating Hydra, like the leader of Hydra, that Hydra would come back? Who would have thought that anyone could have risen up the ranks of this enormous organisation to become the leader of Hydra? So, of course, you'd just dump him, wouldn't you? Also... Also, it's called Hydra, isn't it? It's called... It's not called Snake and you kill it with a shovel it's and called it's called Hydra, and in this... His two children rise up to become the leaders of Hydra. And not once in this does anyone say, if you cut off the head of the Hydra, then two more take its place. <laughs> that's literally what that's what the saying was made for. It was made for this show and they didn't do it. They didn't do it. So they're releasing the Death's Head virus, mm -hmm. which they get from the body of Baron Von Strucker. And they're going to uh, use very cold missiles 
to <laughs> lodge them into New York City circa 1998. That's right. An obvious tragedy. So they need David Hasselhoff's Nick Fury out of retirement. But again, he's been pushed out by pencil pushers. Mm -hmm. He also got an eye pushed out of his head. So he's got right. that going on. Look, you know, he's made reappearances in, in Marvel movies since. He's, of course, Whoa, in what? Guardians of the Galaxy. We have to say that because people will, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things people will remind us if we didn't. We'll get, a t we'll get a comment that's like, didn't you know that Nick Fury's actually in every Marvel movie <laughs> ever made? <laughs> <laughs> and not everyone, though. Not everyone, not I say. everyone. Everyone, you're right, yeah. But what he's going for here is he's just doing Snake Plissken, but not as good a version of Snake Plissken. I'll give him this. He's very tall. He's much taller <laughs> than everybody else. He's very tall. So, so that's good. But he's got, like, no charm or skill. He's just aggression and a very dull wit. You know, because he's not funny, but he's constantly like, hey, dudes, what about, do take you outside? He's give like, you a, give guys, you a like you tend to cling to the bowl no matter how many times you flush. <laughs> like, he, right. meets the new, he meets the boss and he's just like, yeah, you're a big turd. <laughs> also, he's stupid. There's a telepath in it or someone who can read minds. Guess what? Doesn't have telepathy in the comic books. No, well, okay, so. They just need her There's at some the, things they, they got wrong, they okay? Just, <laughs> they, just, they just need her at the end to be like, they, they just needed a get out of jail free card, I think, at the end because, like, the. the the, the, How's the, the bad guy going to give up the information? We'll just say one of them has telepathy and then we'll film a scene at the start, one scene at the start, where she reads somebody's mind for a second. Yeah. And, uh, and then we can just say that's how it worked. My point is, though, like, there's nothing about him that makes me go, yeah, you need this guy. Because you don't. They're all about equally skilled. He's tall. I'll give him that. He's very tall. If there was something up high, he could get it. You have to get it. that can of beans <laughs> off the shelf, you know? But the thing is, he's stupid because... The, the woman who's got uh, telepathy says, oh, yeah, no, I got an implant to, like, Kate, enhance Kate, the very it. memorable Kate. The very memorable Kate. And he goes, Ooh, and he, like, looks down at her boobs. He's like, Ooh, and she's like, no, obviously not. It's in my head. Yeah, you're an idiot. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. So here's, here's the things that I've, uh, that I retained. You know, I make my notes during this. Sure, uh -huh. And at the end I went, I've got, like, four notes. Like, I haven't retained <laughs> any of this. So here's the things that I remembered immediately. I'm like, okay, here's the, here's the things that stuck out. There's lots of data screens and monitors and keyboards and the scanning of, of hands and eyes. And that's not uncommon in a movie or show like this. But I would say like 30% of this is dedicated to oh, scenes definitely, like that. Yeah. Yeah. If you like it when uh, you characters in a movie or TV should go to a location mm. and the location is spelled out in like that typo <laughs> font, <laughs> then you will love this. <laughs> it's an endless parade of... <laughs> You certainly will. One of the major reveals that I uh, remember is when he, he meets up with a blonde woman who's working for S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, ha ha, I'm actually not this blonde woman. And she sprays her face with a, a chemical or a, a mask. I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. This movie <laughs> contains two different kinds of special secret agent sprays. Did you know? What was the second there's one? The, there's the face spray, but there's also get through a bunch of lasers spray. I, d I didn't, I didn't see that. Oh my James. <laughs> there's a scene. There's a scene. All right. Where they have to, they, they can't go through this area because there's a bunch of lasers that'll either detect them or cut them to bits. I'm not sure. Yeah. And then Pierce is like, Oh, excuse me. I've got this spray and he sprays the spray okay, yeah. and then they can walk through the lasers. Okay. So that's, okay. so to the best of my knowledge, that's, Maybe it's the same spray. Maybe it's Might be the same spray. <laughs> I don't it's know. The, it's like the WD forty of uh, intelligence agencies. You can just you can just, just, just does on everything. Bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. I got a creaky joint. I'll give it a spray. So when when she sprays her face and it's revealed that she's actually the the daughter of Baron von Strucker, mm -hmm. I had to rewind it to go. Oh, this is a different woman because they're both just very similar looking blonde women. Mm -hmm. And because I'm watching it, you know, it's pretty it's pretty low def. I really had to, like, go, I don't... What's happened here? James, this is why you would make a terrible secret agent. <laughs> Every blonde woman looks the same to you. I'm in low def, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned uh, the, the mind-reading sequence. There, the one at the end, it's, it's extended. It's quite long. And you'd think that how it often is with a mind-reading sequence, you get flashbacks and you go into people's minds and maybe there's a battle in the mind and they have maybe, a, a yeah. mind battle. Maybe like, they both appear as knights of the round <laughs> table or they're with, with jousting poles or something. Something like that. You know, like in Dread, they do really good versions of that. Dread is a knight of the round table. He's got a jousting <laughs> got pole. A Lena Headey's he's got a jousting pole. They're just jousting at each other. But here it's just... It's just sparks and heavy breathing. And it's quite long. It's like a minute long of like, keep getting the numbers. And so she's getting a list of numbers. 
because they they need a list of numbers to stop the bomb. And then he uh, he has to he has to choose between the numbers six and nine for the missile. And then there's a really tense scene where he's like six, no nine, no six, no I think it's nine. It's like <laughs> what what are we doing here? What's happening here? Anyway, it was six I think from memory. It was definitely six. <laughs> there's something James. I remember. Do you remember when uh, a robot, a life model decoy, walked into the room of the pencil pusher, the real, sh- the shield nerd who got Nick mm-hmm. Fury kicked out, and then it opened up its mouth and then a big 3D holographic head went to the centre of the room and spun around and told it its, its plans or whatever? I had forgotten until this moment, but yes. <laughs> yes I, so it, I do, but it did happen, I didn't do remember it? that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it reminded me of... Um, What's that movie where the guy plays video games and he goes into space or whatever? He plays Battle the, Beyond the Stars. The Last Starfighter. Last Fighter? Starfighter, that okay, one. Sure. It's one of those movies that I named. Anyway, also it turns out uh, very late in the game, it's revealed that Nick Fury has a fake eye in his head, and that is also a massive explosive, and he just walks around with that in his head. Yep. All right. What if he went through like I don't know, like airport security and a magnet set it off or something? James. He lives in a mine shaft. He's not going through airport security anytime soon. <laughs> not with not smoking a cigarette would he? or a cigar, right. would he? They're not going to be letting him. And here's the thing also. I know that Hasselhoff can like can run up a beach. Like, mm. I know that. Yeah, he's famous for he's it. He's famous for it. But he sure as shit can't do stunt fighting. Like, at all. And that could also be put down to the Corrie. You know what I mean, maybe? <laughs> and the, the blocking. That's right, the way it's filmed. But there's a fight that he has, like a fist fight with... Baron von Strucker's daughter towards the end, and my played goodness. by Sandra Hess from uh, of uh, Mortal Kombat fame. Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Yeah. Maybe that's coming up soon, Mason. Maybe. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> We're gonna have We've to. said it now. We committed to it. You can't edit this out. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's real. It's really poor fighting. And look, if you if you don't mind, I'm just gonna skip to the ending because I wanna I wanna highlight what I remember. Okay. Come on. So. At the end, Baron von Strucker's daughter gets inside Baron von Strucker's uh, casket, his frozen casket, Mm -hmm. and it slowly uh, lowers into the ground, very slowly, and Hasselhoff's like, ah, she's she's getting away, ah. Also, he's got a life model decoy, but whatever. It doesn't matter, does it? Anyway, it's really slow, and how deep does it go? I don't know. It's not specified, but he goes, ah, she's halfway to China right now. Why don't you drop like a grenade down? You could probably climb down. Mm-hmm. How like how deep do you think it is? Maybe you have a spray. <laughs> Maybe you've got a spray. You spray you just just and it'll it'll seize up because you put the spray on it. That's right. Well, maybe or maybe it goes faster <laughs> all the way to China. <laughs> but like, does he think they? Where does he think it goes? Because really, she's just like ten feet in the earth, right? Well, exactly. That's does what he I think actually think there are tunnels to China? Because <laughs> that's a myth, Nick Fury. <laughs> Well, it's the Marvel Universe. It's the Marvel oh, Cinematic that's Universe. that's true. So maybe, maybe there are tunnels to China. Yeah. Uh, and as maybe that's what he was digging in his mine shaft. He's like, <laughs> I know this can be done. <laughs> so as, uh, as, also, as is customary also at the end of like 80s and 90s action movies, it's like a, that pencil neck geek gets punched. Sure does. He's like, well, well, look, you've saved the world, but I don't approve and I'm going to write you up for whatever. And then bang, write me up for me giving you a big fucking punch in the mouth. Mate. Which, honestly, um, we, we all saw that he did it. I mean, arguably, <laughs> he, they'd let him off for the, all the other stuff, but he definitely punched that he guy. He definitely punched him so hard. And, of course, there's one post credit scene, or as we used to call them, pre credit scenes. That's right. You know, A uh, thing that happened at the end of the movie. <laughs> that's right. Where it's revealed that Baron von Strucker is, in fact, alive, mm. and he's ready to take revenge for... Um, he, just, he wants to do more Nazi stuff. He's got all kinds of sprays. It he's got so does. many sprays. It's and he re- the one spray. It's and he the replaces the previously alive old guy in this movie, Arnim Zola, who got electrified by a reversible electric gun and then just rolled his wheelchair off a cliff or something. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I think intentionally. I can't tell. No, it's hard to say. It is, isn't it? Anyway, I wanted to talk about David Goyer's involvement in this. Okay. Because David Goyer's he's been involved with a lot of Great stuff. And he survived a lot of duds, apparently, as <laughs> yes, well. it seems that way. So he spoke with Mandatory in 2016, because mm-hmm. he had to. <laughs> I get it. Okay, that's good. He said, I was approached uh, with the idea of doing a Nick Fury film, and they wanted to make it for a price. They what? Wanted- this is what he said. I'm just reading it. They wanted to I ma- said you should make it for free out of the goodness of your heart. <laughs> for the art of it, you know. But they said, nah. <laughs> they wanted to make it for $10 million, something like that. And I thought, well, it's espionage. He's not a superhero. I could maybe do something. So I wrote what I thought was a classically influenced Jim Steranko Nick Fury movie. I don't know. I think Marvel got sold again. But that went into purgatory for years and years until later Marvel made some kind of 
deal to do four TV movies at Fox and somehow they ported over this script of mine and they said they wanted to make it into a TV movie and at this point in my career things were a little further along and at the time TV wasn't the TV that it is today. I wasn't super enthused about trying to do a TV movie because now they were suddenly trying to make it for three million dollars or something like that. Apparently it was six. You can see some money in this though, right? Yeah, like, but you can also see Vancouver. <laughs> Don't you remember the 90s? Everything was filmed everything, in Vancouver. Everything was, wasn't some, it? If, if, if the scene's not being filmed in some sort of, you know, underground lair filled with pipes, it's just being filmed in an alleyway. It's so just true. A, just a dreary old <laughs> alleyway in Vancouver. And they said, guess what? What? We've got David Hasselhoff as the lead. And nothing against David Hasselhoff. But here's but, something but, against David Hasselhoff. But it took it into a camp direction, and they asked me if I wanted to rewrite the script, so I took a pass. I actually wasn't involved in the production, and I don't know who rewrote it to this day, so I can't really speak to what happened then. Ha <laughs> ha! Laughs in brackets. So, yeah, he wrote an initial thing which became a different thing. I see. So you can't blame but him But he's for still this. credited on it. Yes. I guess David Hasselhoff wrote it. <laughs> it seems that way. Which explains the song at the end in German. Is there? No. Oh, I, I just turn it off. I turned it off, Mason. I would have, I, that would have been a highlight for me. Um, so look, one of the things we do on this channel is we read reviews from Letterboxd and you have to try and guess what insane review correlates to a movie, right? Thank you for bringing the madness of those videos into this video. Here we go. <laughs> I just want to read a few Letterboxd oh, okay, reviews. Cool. All that's right. all. So I don't have to guess anything? I mean, you can, but I it's... refuse. <laughs> okay, so this is from Cameron who says, I fully believe uh, the plot device to have Nick Fury poisoned was to cover up the fact that David Hasselhoff moves as gracefully as a mannequin. Very tall, though, isn't he? So tall, Mason. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, he's poisoned for all of this, isn't he? He's been poisoned, not with snake venom, but tree frog venom. Couldn't even go with that. No, they couldn't. He got a big kiss, didn't he? From Viper. Yeah. Which is like me, I'm giving you the kiss of the Viper. Tree frog venom. They did that in um one of the Wolverines, the one where he fights a very old man in a robot. <gasps> did David S. Goy write that as well? Don't know. Huh. Let's not look into it. Let's not look into it. <laughs> Leave it in the comments. Please. Uh, Camilla says, ah... Oh, it's so bad. I think it might actually be worse than The Incredible Hulk Returns, even. This doesn't even have a guy painted green. It's true. It is boring, isn't it? It is bo boring like, and bland. And the Hydra guys aren't even, like, they haven't, aren't even dressed in the traditional Hydra green. They're just in black, men in black suits with white face Faces. paints. I thought there was, like, two of those guys, but I think it's most of them. Or it's the same guy they just filmed from different angles. Yeah, it's meant to be a bunch. It's, much, it's meant to be all their, like, oh. elite espionage guys. <laughs> Like in the tradition of like, you'll never see these guys coming, the bald men painted chalk white. <laughs> and the last one, uh, which to its credit is one and a half stars, so a little bit above oh that yeah, one okay. star. Uh, Kevin says, I realise this was made on a television budget. I realise that this was a product of the genre's awkward teen years. I realise that Hasselhoff is doing the best he can, but this is some shit. <laughs> 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 which I think is quite an apt description of this uh, show. It's atrocious. Every now and then we hit something really atrocious and we've <laughs> really struck on it today. I always knew this existed. I always thought this is probably a funny camp throwback, but it's just boring. It, it's dull. That's that's the biggest crime you can commit, I think, in a comic book superhero yeah. style movie is if I'm just checking my phone or like really wanting this to be over so I can watch something else illegally uploaded to YouTube, <laughs> uh, then then oh God, I've got millions of options. Absolutely. I could watch another Mr. Sunday Movies video. Absolutely you could. But that's the, yeah. then that's the worst thing you could do. Just I think also what you just struck on then, the fact that they've never bothered to remove this from YouTube really speaks to how nobody cares or knows this exists. Mm. I can't tell. He fucking looks like Nick Fury, though. I give him that. Very God tall. God damn, he's yeah. tall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he could have some like white at the temples. Maybe. Sure. But the look is... It's solid. That's right. Also, his life model decoy is more muscular than him. I don't know what they're doing there. I don't know what's going on. But uh, he's got a sign off on it. And he, <laughs> okay. would, he wouldn't. Nick Fury and Hasselhoff wouldn't sign off on it if. Mm, that's it, true. Yeah. But then you know which one you're fighting. No, oh, this true. one's more muscular. So I mean, they're still very tall, and yeah, that's yeah. good. This one skipped leg day, so it's the real one. <laughs> All right, this has been Camp Out of Garbage. We do this here every week. And if you do want to see these early, which you absolutely can, if you go to bigsandwich.co and sign up, they're always there early, aren't they, Mason? That's exactly right. Also, there's a bunch of other podcasts there, including our podcast, The Weekly Planet, but an ad-free feed that's and a day right. early. And we do exclusive podcasts there. We do one on clickbait. We do one on comic book clubs, don't we? We do a, we do a movie commentary every month. That's right. Maybe this time it'll be on Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the, the, the TV... 
Back, backdoor pilot. It won't be. But maybe it will be. Maybe. <laughs> but it won't be. We'll go back to this. Yeah. That's right. And we do one on particular years in pop culture as well. So, yeah, you can check that out if you want. But as mentioned, our podcast called The Weekly Planet comes out every Monday, regular time, if you do want to check that out. That's right. And we'll see you at the next video. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. I've got to do that thing where I hint towards next week. Here's a hint towards next week. I can't. I don't know what we're well, doing. It's Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. again. <laughs> We're doing one of those things where we just keep watching it. I don't like that. Every week. I don't like that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Grab that chair, you guys. We'll see you next week. Now get 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 me out of here, James. I'm feeling like a, a bratwurst. Either get me out of here or get me some mustard. That's what he says. He's, Is that what he says? He says it in the... It's good. Get me out of here or get me some mustard. He can, so he can smear himself in mustard. <laughs> like no, a bratwurst. Like a bratwurst. He's wood. in a chamber. He's in a chamber. Oh, that's right. Because they're like, that's right. That flashing chamber is like being zipped. Mm -hmm. Let's get out. I don't, I don't want to talk about this anymore. So we should get out of here? Let's get out of or here. Or we should get some mustard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> For smearing. <laughs> this podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.